Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome to how to open your own barbershop. You can open your own barbershop in 30 days. My name is Alan and I'm going to walk you through uh, step by step as much as I can remember on how to start your own barbershop and open your own barbershop. Now, um, before we get started, let me just say this. Um, I'm going to give you as much information as I remember. Um, and as I remember more information, I'll keep revising this tutorial, I'll keep revising this video um, to give you updated information as I remember it. Um, but as of right now, the stuff that I remember, I'm going to give to you. And I'm going to give it to you the best of my knowledge and the best of my know-how, okay? So let's get started really quick. This is just a quick intro. This lesson is, is intended to help you take the first steps in setting up your own barbershop. It is also intended to help you create a profitable business capable of earning you a good living. I'm going to share with you my, experiencing, my experience in opening up a shop and some of the things I wish I had done differently. I made a lot of mistakes when I first opened up a barbershop. I had some help, but... Um, because I had never been in business before, because I had never done anything like that before, I made a lot of mistakes. And the mistakes that I made, um, I can remember quite a few of them. And I wish that I could have done those things differently. And this is kind of that, that thing on how to open up your own barbershop. But then also the experience that I had opening up my own shop, running my own shop, and uh, the mistakes that I made, the things that I've done, that I, that I have done well, that I do well. And the things that I didn't do so well that I wish I could have done a little bit differently. The first thing that I wish I could have done um, is instead of just jumping right in, I wish I, I would have just really thought about it. So here's some things that I learned. Your barbershop will take on your personality. Whatever your personality is like, that's what your business is going to be like. You know, I know a lot of times when you see people run these fabulous businesses and these big uh, conglomerates or these chain barbershops or whatever it is, whatever business that comes to your head when you think of successful, um, you, you always want to do what they've done or you want to try to figure out what it is that makes them special. Or what have they done? You know, a lot of people read a lot of books. I read a lot of books on business and I've learned some principles. I've learned some things to do and some things not to do by reading those books. But ultimately what I've learned is my business is an extension of me. My business is an extension of my personality, the way that I like to do things, the way that I think things should be done. And there is no right or wrong in that. Um, your personality and the way you do things is how you feel comfortable doing them. It's the way that you like to do them. And there is no wrong in that. So the only thing you can really do is just become more comfortable with you. And when you look at your business, you'll be really looking at you. So if it's something that you don't like about your business, if it's something that's not running properly, the only person you can look at is you. Your barbershop will take on your personality. If you're an artsy type of person, then you're probably going to have like an artsy type of barbershop. If you're just a, a general guy like me, you're just going to have a general barbershop. If you're one of those... Um, you know, you want an upscale barbershop, you like an upscale person, then that's the kind of shop you'll have. It'll take on your, your, your personality. Having your own barbershop offers financial stability. You'll get the advantage of small businesses. Um, small businesses get a lot of advantages. <clears throat> America was built and founded on small business. So there are a lot of um, benefits into going into small business. It's kind of uh, the country's way of saying this is what we want you to do this is the direction that we feel like you should go in and we want you to know that because you're going into this in in this direction we want to help you we want you to uh, experience some of the joy of being in small business for yourself um, small businesses provide tax breaks they provide doors that normally would be closed to you they are now open to you um, they provide uh, partnerships um, not so much partnering your business, but partnerships like if you're going to sell products, if you're going to sell clippers, stuff like that, you can partner up with those companies to sell their product and earn money, make money. Um, and it also gives you the freedom and control over your finances. I think we, we already know that you get to um, plan and, and create something from nothing and take control of your own finances, take control of your destiny. So I think that's pretty cool when it comes to um, running and owning a business. The first thing that I wish I would have done is I wish I would have done a business plan. 
Um, I didn't realize how important a business plan was until I was in business. And um, I didn't realize how important it was until it was time for me to expand, until it was time for me to do more with my business. And then I realized like having a business plan would have been very, very uh, valuable to me because that's what people want to see when it's time for you to expand or when you need capital or, or something like that. That's what they want to see. They want to see how they can get their money back. Um, and I didn't have a business plan. And that hurt me in that aspect. But it also hurt me in the aspect of keeping my business on course. Because when you're in business, you're going to run into things that you didn't expect to run into. You're going to encounter problems that you never expected to have. And those problems make you adjust. And if you don't have a business plan, it's easy to adjust, 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 adjust. And now you're in a place that you never expected to be when you first started your barbershop. So a business plan will help you to remain on course so that even when you have to adjust, you're adjusting based on what you saw and the vision that you have for your barbershop. So that's the first thing that I wish I would have done. A business plan is not hard. Um, as a matter of fact, if you don't know how to write a business plan, there's software out there for you to get. There's business planning software. If you don't want to pay for the business plan software because you don't want to try to figure out how to use it, you can go to any college and talk to one of those business students and see if they would write you a business plan as part of uh, a career, as part of the class see if that's something that they have to do and you can get your business plan written for free or or very inexpensively um, but I would definitely recommend that you have a, a business plan and in your business plan you want to outline you know simple things what's the name of your shop how many barbers you're gonna have how much money do you expect to make how do you expect to market your business um, uh, uh, how how do you want your barbers to act? Um, what do you do when you have slow times? How are you going to adjust to that? How are you going to get your business acquisitions and different things like that? Just whatever you're trying to do with your business, you want to take your thoughts and put them down on paper. That's all a business plan is. And then you're just going to map out the things that you're going to do. That's it. That's a business plan um, in a nutshell but I would recommend that you get a business plan something that's written down on a piece of paper it doesn't have to be formal or anything like that if you don't want it to be um, I would say get something just written down on a piece of paper um, Al's Barbershop um, Al's Barbershop is gonna have seven barbers it's gonna have two manicurists it's gonna have a pedicurist it's gonna have a receptionist it's gonna sell products I'm gonna make seventy five thousand dollars a year and this is how and then you kind of go from your 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 dream that you have because that's the end result the dream that you have is your end result and then you're gonna work your way backwards on where you are right now and how you're gonna get to that dream you, if that makes sense to you it'll help you create your business before you invest any of your hard-earned money for me personally I invested all my own money um, no that's not completely true because I did use one credit card to get my chairs but everything else was all my hard-earned money um, I didn't borrow any money. I didn't take on a partner. I used all my own money and I'll share with you guys how I did it um, because it's quite simple. You can actually start today. Uh, but it'll also create a roadmap for your business helping you to navigate your business when you hit rough patches in your shop. And there's a good chance that you will hit some sort of a rough patch. And when I say rough patch, I'm not talking about where you feel like you have to close your doors or anything like that because it doesn't get that rough. Um, I'm just talking about a rough patch where now you've kind of plateaued, the newness of your business has worn off, and now you're trying to get more customers into your shop, and you need to know how you're going to do that. So you want to create a concept for your shop. Um, this is where you decide if you if you just want a barbershop like I did. I just wanted a simple barbershop. Um, or if you want a barbershop and a salon, that's something that I did want later. Um, because I realized they really coexist well with one another and I was missing out on a lot of opportunity by not having it or if you want a male salon or you want to establish a theme like a sports theme you want cats that work out you want like a workout theme you want car lovers theme where everything is made out of car materials or something that you would find in a garage anything like that um, these are the times that you would think about your concept what you want um, I think you guys get the point of what I'm saying when it comes to that because that's pretty simple that's you know nothing really difficult or something that you have to labor over in thought um, what kind of barbershop do you want to start 
do you want to start do you want to buy an existing barbershop where somebody is now selling their shop there are pros and cons to that the pro is that you're getting a shop and you're getting all the equipment and you're getting employees the con is that it could have a bad reputation um, when it comes time to make changes to the shop because remember I said that your shop will take on your personality whoever the owner was before the shop has taken on their personality and people are used to that it's very hard to get people to adjust and to change um, because the first thing they think about is themselves and they think about their money and how they're going to provide and they think about how this is going to change um, how they provide and how they'll make money so you have a lot of resistance when it comes to um, making changes or getting the shop to take on your personality so those are some of the cons and let me tell you those are some big cons um, just from the adjustments that I made in my own shop I found a lot of resistance with the barbers and that resistance is kinda like you have to baby step them you have to baby step them into the changes where if you come in with your own shop and you already have these things established it's either you ride with it or you're not here um, will you buy a franchise? Franchise also has its pros and cons. When you buy a franchise, people recognize the brand, they recognize the name, they know what to expect. It's kind of similar to that. Um, it's kind of similar if you go into a McDonald's. You don't expect a Big Mac here to be different than a Big Mac on the other side of the town. You expect them to be the same. The consistency is what makes people go to franchises. The consistency and the brand is what makes people want to. Uh, frequent that business so those things um, are pluses the minuses are you know you're gonna abide by their rules there are franchising fees involved there's probably a nice um, upfront portion of money that you'll need in order to get that franchise and in order to get a location and and different things like that uh, it, it differs from franchise to franchise so and then there are restrictions there are things that you can and cannot do there will be equipment that you can and cannot use um, sometimes a lot of these franchises they partner up with different companies and you know if you have a franchise that's partnered up with wall but you love Andis and all your barbers love Andis you no longer can use Andis you are a wall company and you will use wall it's if you've ever taken a look into any of the Aveda brand um, Aveda uses their own products they come in with their own color schemes and their own ways that they like to do things and you cannot bring in other products you have to use their products so I find that a lot of these franchises are doing the same thing or you can start from scratch and, and have your own barbershop this is the avenue that I took I took on having my own um, barbershop and I gotta tell you guys I started with really no money and here's here's the good thing so let me let me let me say this first you actually can start your own barbershop as quickly as tonight there is a way that you can do it that a lot of barbers do not take advantage of but they probably should because of the way that they file taxes it would be beneficial to them if you were to start a barbershop you're gonna to have to file paperwork for an, a corporation a sole proprietorship a partnership or an LLC that's just one of the steps that you have to take well truth be told you can do that right now without a building especially if you pay rent if you pay booth rent or you pay chair rental um, in a barbershop then I would definitely recommend that you start your shop right now where you are and here are the pluses to doing that if you were to um, file for an LLC so I'll use me as an example I'm paying rent at a barbershop of hundred and fifty dollars a week which is roughly like six hundred dollars a month that is my lease agreement what I would do and what you can do is you can go to somewhere like Staples and get yourself a lease agreement and have the person who owns the shop give you this lease agreement where both of you guys sign it that you're gonna pay him six hundred dollars a month this is technically this is technically now your barbershop you file for your LLC you have a place of business you have a lease agreement and now you are technically in business and you can partner up with different companies that you can't partner up with when you're just self-employed because they want to see an EIN number or an employer identification number or they want to see uh, your sales tax certificate 
those things you, you don't get. You can get those things when you start your business, even if it's just a sole proprietorship. You can get those things and now you can call these different companies and sell their products and earn some extra money while you're cutting hair. You don't have to cut more hair. Now you can just sell those products. So you actually can get your barbershop started right now where you are just by following the steps. Now, my advice would be find out what the state laws are in, in my state, in New Jersey. I can do that. And I, I tried to get some of my barbers to do it because it would be beneficial for them. They would be their own business. They could set their own prices. And this is kind of the sloppy part of having booth rent. So when you when you have a barbershop, if you had somebody like me working for you who understands um what my advantages are if I were to charge somebody let's say 20 bucks and your price board says 15 and you say you can't charge that well you can't tell me what I can't charge because I pay you rent you are not my boss you are my uh, landlord and so I can't be fired by you I can only be fired by clients so those are some of the disadvantages even with um, if you do a percentage, if you're on a percentage is roughly the same, you can pretty much average it out and say, Hey, this is my lease agreement. Here's what my paperwork says. I'm in business for myself. I get to charge my own prices, you know, so on and so forth. So those are some things that you want to think about too. I personally would say make barbers employees, but sometimes that's rough, especially if you have a, a slow startup and you're paying them hourly or whatever the case may be. So it depends on what you want to do I started with really no money um, and what I did was I took and decided what I wanted I knew I wanted anywhere from five to seven barbers and particularly I wanted to stay at the five range and I knew I needed five stations five mirrors five floor mats you know five uh, sanitation jars you know I, I knew what I needed and what I did is I would buy them slowly. So let's say, uh, so my stations, my stations were fairly inexpensive. You can find inexpensive stations right there on eBay for like $109, anywhere from $109 to $150. Bucks. So that's $545 for me. I took the $545, I got my five stations. I stuck them in my basement. Then, um, that next week I went out and I got some mirrors stuck them in my basement then I think I waited a little while and I got I got waiting chairs I knew I was gonna want like 25 to 30 waiting chairs so I bought my waiting chairs they were expent more expensive than I thought um, I got my waiting chairs I got my Sanex jars I ordered them online for like 10 bucks a piece it was like 50 bucks so month after month I was getting all of my stuff that I needed and wanted and uh, that's how I had my that's how I started my shop so that I would have all my equipment well when I got my lease agreement and I got my certificate of occupancy and I did all those things that I needed to do I already had all my equipment the only thing I didn't have was chairs I had my shampoo bowls I had my shampoo chair I had my dryers I had my dryer chairs I had everything that I would need everything that I would need for myself and my barbers the only thing I didn't have was chairs and those were five hundred dollars a piece now you can get a chair for like three hundred bucks they were five hundred dollars a piece was twenty five hundred dollars that's where I used my credit card um, I used my credit card to get my chairs when I moved in and that and they delivered them right to my door I set them up and my barbershop was ready that's what I did so if you find that you don't have money and you wanna save up money um, for me it was hard to save up money then this was 10 years ago it was hard for me to save money then so I bought it as I had the money and that way I didn't have to worry about saving up the money because I was buying the equipment as I got the money so however much money I needed for whatever I was looking to buy I would get that much money and I would go buy my stuff and I didn't have to save it and I put the stuff in my basement and that's how I got started um, <clears throat> I remember um, looking for a building I'm gonna to move to the next slide I remember looking for a building um, I remember uh, looking and looking and looking and looking and looking it was that was probably the hardest part of, of getting my own shop um, so I, we're gonna keep on going so that's just to give you a little bit of my story so your barbershop expenses now we're getting into 
how I got my barbershop going and how you're going to get yours going. Your barbershop expenses, because starting a barbershop is easy, but it will cost you. Like I said, you couldn't take the route where if you're working right now and you're renting a chair, you can start right there and start establishing your shop right there. Establishing your clientele, establishing the way that you want to do things, so on and so forth. Um, here are some other expenses that you'll encounter when opening up your barbershop. You're going to need to lease space. So you're going to be leasing space, uh, commercial property. You're going to need to buy equipment. I told you how I bought my equipment. I bought it piece by piece. You're going to need to get a shop license. Um, so what you can do for that is, um, what I did is I called, uh, in New Jersey, it's cosmetology. So it's not just barbering. And I know in other states, they have barbering and they have cosmetology. Well, at the time that I was applying, they didn't have barbering. They just opened up a barbering program here in New Jersey. They just had cosmetology. So I called state board. You can call your state board. And I told them I'm looking to open up a barbershop. Can you send me out the information on what needs to be done? for me to open a barbershop and they'll send you out the information once they send you out the information you want to follow it to the letter follow step by step by step don't you know just jump around because then you'll forget just do one step at a time and follow it to the letter and that way you know everything is smooth when it comes time for them to come inspect your space and all that stuff they'll tell you everything that you need how much space you need how much space each barber is going to need they're, they're going to tell you if you need wash bowls. If you don't need wash bowls, they're going to tell you everything that you need. Just follow it to the letter. So you're going to need to get your shop license. Um, you're going to have to be licensed in most states. In New Jersey, you have to be licensed at least three years before you can get your own shop license. All right, so you're going to need that. There's going to be an application fee. I know for us it was an application fee for when I did it. I don't know what state you're in, if you're going to have an application fee, but I would bank on having having an application fee. Uh, you're going to need to get a, a CO or Certificate of Occupancy that basically says you're allowed to operate there and people are allowed to come in. And you're going to need to get your utilities turned on. All this stuff is fairly easy stuff, but this stuff is going to cost you money. Each step is going to cost you money. Getting a lease, they're going to ask at least for first and last month's rent. Um, they may even ask for a deposit depending on your credit. If your credit is shaky, they're going to ask you for a deposit. But guaranteed first and last month's rent. You're going to have to buy equipment. I already told you how I bought my equipment. And that's how you can go about buying your equipment. Um, you're going to need to get your shop license. There's an application fee involved in that. There's a licensing fee involved in that. Um, and then you're going to need to get your CO and there's a fee involved in that and then you're going to need to get your utilities turned on and they're going to charge you for that. So those are some of the extra costs that you're going to absorb when getting your shop license. But like I said, if you contact your state board, they'll send you out the paperwork if you ask for it and it will walk you through step by step what that state requires for you to have a shop. So make sure, and I'm sorry that I didn't put it on here, but make sure you call your state board and tell them that you want to open up your own barbershop and, and tell them to send you out the information. And they're going to send you out the information. Financing your barbershop. I went over this already just a little bit with you guys. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is evaluate your financial situation. For me, that's how I evaluated mine. I knew I wasn't going to be good at saving, so that's how I went about doing mine. Um, uh, just buying it piece by piece. Before you try to open your shop, do a couple of things. Evaluate your financial situation as well. How many months of rent do you have saved? For me, I didn't have months saved. I had my first and my last month, and I had to get in there and grind it out. I went to work. Now, for me, I had a friend who was a barber who I used to work with at another shop, and um, when I decided to open up my own, I went to him to see if he was happy there. And he said, no, he said he would love to get out of there, but he don't know where to go. I told him I was opening up my own shop. He said he was in. So I had a veteran barber who had clientele come with me. I had a guy who was coming to the barber shop, um, asking me to teach him how to cut hair and show him what he needed to do in order to get clientele. So I had him. Um, I talked to him. I told him what I was going to do. I told him he should come with me and I could walk with him you know hand in hand he now he now has his own shop and he's got about 10 barbers um so you know I, i'm kind of proud of that 
Um, so I had two barbers when I started and I knew I could get more eventually but to have two to have one that was a veteran and then myself I knew I could cover all the expenses at that point and I could cover them easily um, and then him um, anything that we could not get to I knew that he was gonna make some money because it was only three of us and um, I was gonna be getting a percentage from him so that was gonna help out so that's what you want to do uh, the owner of any retail space that you're attempting to rent will ask for first and last month's rent um, I told you that they're gonna ask for that up front you might be required to put a deposit down I told you that how much is equipment gonna cost you that's something you can um, go over for yourself I would recommend checking out eBay a lot um, I found a lot of inexpensive equipment on eBay how much do you need to set aside for marketing that's a mistake that I made I did not have any budget for marketing the only thing I had was a grand opening sign and some you know little banners that you stick out there and that that worked for me you know to have that grand opening sign say grand opening and new barbershop and have a lot of fanfare going on outside that worked for me this was in 2005 2015 I haven't opened a barbershop in 2015 I'm still stuck at 2005 so that worked for me at that time now I can tell you some things that I've also done that have worked for me a little bit I advertised when I got the money in a movie theater and that worked because they they play for every movie that helped me out but a friend of mine he did something that really exploded his shop he shot a commercial he did a commercial a 30 second spot and um, that 30 second spot really it really just blew his business up I mean really blew his business up and the key to what he did was he didn't put the address of the shop in the commercial he only put the telephone number and that way he could keep track of how he was getting his clients because they would call the shop to get the address they would call the shop to find out where we were located so he just had what we did um, who the barbers were and our hours of operation and then a phone number to call and they would call um, and it exploded his business I never did that one um, but I can tell you right now that that worked like you would not believe so that might be an idea for you to do a commercial and depending on your time slot can depend on how expensive it is and depending on where you do it so his target demographic was you know people like us um, you know guys that listen to rap music and you know work hard you know just some regular cats and uh, he played it um, right, right during 106 in Park. Well, we have 106 in Park here. I don't know if you guys have 106 in Park where you're at. But 106 in Park played on BET. They played music. And uh, it would run throughout that time. He would also play it throughout games. So like on ESPN, it would run through uh, an NBA game on ESPN. It might run twice. And we were getting a lot of attention from there. Anywhere that men would be in front of the television, he kind of ran it. And it worked. Um, financing your barbershop part two okay so starting your barbershop can cost you anywhere from 10 grand to 20 grand mine cost me 10 grand after I did all the math and I added everything up that I had to put in it cost me 10 grand um, if you do not have 10 grand I told you how I did mine you can keep that format but if you don't want to go that route if that route is just not a route that's gonna work for you you can talk to family and friends and see if you can borrow money from them um, the problem with that for me is it has to be paid back um, you can lose friendships and have family members mad at you if you don't pay them back uh, you could do a business partner I never recommend doing a business partner because I, I had a business partner in a business that I was in in a car dealership that I opened um, I had the shop up and running it was running well and I've always wanted to just buy and sell cars whenever I wanted so I wanted to start my own dealership I had a buddy of mine we did it together and we just had two different ways that we thought it should go and that kinda just didn't work out um, there was no animosity there was no um, backlash from it um, I don't believe in um, splitting up friendships over money and neither does he and so we just kinda parted it just didn't work out he had a way that he liked to do it and I had a way that I like to do it and they were just different and that's what you're gonna face if you get a partner you're gonna face 
where this person wants to do it this way, you're going to want to do it that way, and then it's kind of split. I've talked to a lot of barbershop owners who've gone in with partners, and they say it's the biggest regret that they've, that they've ever had. Bank loans. Bank loans have to be paid back, but they have to be paid back with interest, and that can put a strain on your business, especially when you're new. I would stay away from a bank loan. But if you feel like you can handle it and your credit is good enough, then if that's the route you want to go, then you can go. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, if anything, I would lease equipment. At least when you lease the equipment, um, you know, you can constantly get new equipment and you're paying that monthly fee. Um, but you're also able to write it off. So it's like having the equipment for free, really. Um, but it still needs to be paid back. Credit cards. I told you I used one credit card and I had to pay that credit card back. Um, if you feel like you can handle that and you have enough credit cards to um, support and get your shop up and running, if I was going to use any route, I'd probably use that one. Because once you have the equipment, there's nothing they can do about it. Like a bank will come take your equipment credit card company more than likely is not going to come take your equipment um, that's a way you can go refinancing your home to get equity out of your home to start your business that's a way to go too. Um, I didn't own a home I don't know anything about that kind of stuff so um, you'd have to get some more information on that and cash I used cash cash is king I always say go with cash um, you're gonna have a lot of people give you advice and say never use your own cash I use my own cash and I was glad that I did because I didn't know anybody anything and it was my equipment that's just my personal feeling on it and that's just my take on it but you know there are a lot of different ways out there that you can do those things all of these are options and all of these should be evaluated by you to determine what type of person you are and what you can handle and what you can't handle for me I knew I couldn't handle family and friends I knew I couldn't handle a business partner at the time and I did want one but you know I just couldn't handle that bank loans nope credit cards I told you I use my one I didn't have a home to refinance and cash is always king it spends anywhere it has no loyalty to anybody so I use that leasing a space okay so now you've decided that you want to have a barbershop and you want to look for space to lease here's what I'm gonna say finding the perfect location is crucial I had a decent location but I could have found a better location what I learned from my location is my location didn't have a lot of walking traffic we had a lot of cars that drove by but we didn't have a lot of walk by traffic and I didn't have a lot of businesses around me um, to help me with that walking traffic and to me that was one of the bigger mistakes that I made I know a lot of people stay away from strip malls because they cost a little bit more but I would say if you can find the right stores within a strip mall that will help support your business a strip mall is the way to go I was paying eleven hundred dollars a month if I would have went into a strip mall I would have paid sixteen hundred dollars a month but I would have got uh, twice the well three times the amount of space that I had and I would have had that walk-in traffic but at the time just looking at the numbers because I started out at a thousand I didn't feel like I could afford sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars I felt like I could afford a thousand when in reality I should have took the bigger space for sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars because I could have done it easily but I had never been in business before so I didn't know what I, what the business was capable of doing and what me and my team was capable of doing so I kinda settled I would say for you if you're gonna dream it dream big because truth be told I could only fit five barbers in my shop but if I could have expanded it to ten barbers and maybe added some extra services I would have because that would have been extra money or maybe ten barbers and seven or eight stylists I would have because that would have been extra money so when you're looking for lease space look for walk-in traffic look for drive-up traffic look for businesses that are around you and business support that's why a lot of these chains I believe they go into these strip malls because there's so much support and there's so much traffic there so that's kinda what you want so like you see outlined here space with high foot traffic and visibility is vital for a barbershop that wants to handle high volume exclusive services might benefit um, being more discreet so I had a friend who he wanted to be more exclusive so he moved upstairs he moved from the building that he had to another building and it was upstairs so he had to come up into that space and it was a nice space but that doesn't work for everybody and it doesn't work everywhere and it didn't work out that well for him it worked out for a little while but it just you know it was too much and he ended up closing that business 
So, you know, you have to think about those things. What kind of salon or what kind of shop are you trying to? Are you trying to be exclusive? Are you trying to be the neighborhood spot? Um, think about those things as well because they're going to be important. Parking is going to be important for any barbershop. Now, I know one friend of mine who got a space and his parking is terrible. But his business does really well. He went to school for business and he knows how to market and, and you know he's just a smart guy he's really really smart but his parking is terrible but he makes it work because like I said he's a smart guy I unfortunately was not that smart so I always look for parking um, parking is very crucial because people don't like to be inconvenienced as you see in um, the, and the second um, key point parking and restrooms are very important for growth that is so true um, when you have a restroom that is dirty, when you have mothers bringing in their children, they don't want to come back to your business. And as, as silly as that sounds, you should want to keep your restrooms clean because you got to use them too. But women are very, very particular on that. They will not want to do business with you if your restrooms are a mess. So when you're looking for your building, make sure that you have a restroom for men and women. Um, if possible, if not possible, make sure that you hire somebody to keep your restrooms clean because the barbers, you're not going to be able to depend on them. Um, if you have one restroom and only seven to ten parking spaces, the barbershop has no room to grow. That's the bottom line. I mean, that's self-explanatory. You need room to grow. You need a lot of parking spaces. That's why strip malls work out really well and places with their own parking that has a lot of parking. They work out well. Women uh, want their own restroom. I told you that because men and boys pee everywhere except for the toilet. That's true. I've had that happen so often. Um, men will use the restroom. You could be out of toilet paper. Nobody says a thing. Barbers don't say a thing and men don't say a thing. It drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. So I constantly have to check on it because nobody's going to say anything. They don't care about your business the way you do. So those are things that you're constantly going to have to check on, constantly going to have to be aware of. They're going to be important when you're finding your space. Um, with limited parking, it will just be too much of a hassle. People don't want to be inconvenienced. We talk about that. So make sure you have parking. Try to get two bathrooms if you can. If you can't, don't. it's not the biggest deal breaker in the world, but you want to have two bathrooms if you can. Uh, trying to find a location. Um, with other businesses around that help support your business a barber supply store a beauty supply store for women restaurants you know you get it but you want to have those other supports a Chinese restaurant um, a pizza place like Domino's or Pizza Hut or something like that um, if you can find an anchor store an anchor store is a store that has been there forever and is probably not going anywhere an anchor store would be like a ShopRite uh, a Walmart uh, a Best Buy uh, uh, you know, just a store that you expect to be around for a long, long time. If you can find a space near something like that, you should be able to do well because people will be familiar with that. Um, don't think just because there's a business around you that it will be able to feed, that you'll be able to feed off their clientele. They will help you, but the bottom line is you don't, you don't want to be the only business without neighbors. That was me, and I'm telling you from experience, that is true. You want to have other businesses around you. Period. Um, we talked about this. Think big when you're when you're looking for the perfect location. Don't get in anybody's space because you can pay the rent by yourself. I did that. Um, I was getting my feet wet in business, and I was just trying to find something that I could afford in case I can't find anybody. Big mistake. Just go all out. And I'm not telling you to go out and get a 5,000 square foot or a 3,000 square foot building that's $3,500 a month. But what I'm saying is if you can find something with 1,200 square feet, 1,500 square feet that you can pay anywhere from 1,500 to 1,800, that might be a sweet spot for you because you can get enough employees and you can do enough things inside your business to get that capital. Let's talk about finding barbers. I told you when I started, I had my boy and I had the guy that I was already teaching. Beyond that, I went to the schools because to find experienced barbers was hard because what makes them um, veteran barbers, what makes them experienced and what gives them that clientele is they kind of stay put. They don't jump around from shop to shop. So finding them is kind of hard unless something happens and they come knocking at your door. And if that's the case, 
that's a wonderful place to be. But for me, I, I ended up going to the schools and then I had to teach them how to cut hair. That is a pro and a con. One, it's a pro because I taught them the way that I cut hair and it really helped me in keeping everything kind of the same. It's a con because they butchered clients. <laughs> One of my barbers, let me tell you this story. One of my barbers, <laughs> he was given a bald fade and... um he went too high and before I could get over there to stop him he was already like in this area here and he took and sprayed the fade in like spray painted it in shaped the guy up raised him the guy was loving it and I was like dear lord when this guy gets home and takes a shower to wash that hair off he's gonna wash his fade out this is bad like I probably just lost a client <laughs> Two weeks later, this guy comes back in. Man, thank you. The barber that cut in two weeks before was like, hey, how you doing, man? I can get you. He was like, no. <laughs> I will wait. I definitely will wait. I appreciate you asking, but I'm just going to wait. And he ended up waiting. So, But I've had clients that didn't come back. Um, so those are the things that you that you're tinkering with if you get students that really don't know how to cut hair you can you can risk losing clientele but you can always get employees I mean they're like a cesspool of barbers in schools so you can always get employees that way if you got friends that are barbers talk to them if you have uh, friends of yours that are barbers hey man sell them on why it would be great to work with you especially if they have clientele and get them over there that's what I did with my boy the other dude he had like little neighborhood dudes that he was cutting he didn't have clientele clientele but he had his own clientele to where he was happy with the money he was making I'll put it like that if he was making two hundred dollars a week he was happy with it and so for me that was cool because I knew me and my boy we could handle my overhead I can work on helping him build up his clientele remember if you pass out flyer remember if you pass out your flyers and do your window advertisement and have your grand opening you're gonna have customers coming through the door that's what I did flyers in the grand opening window advertisements that's it that's all I did and I mean we got popping quick especially if you can cut if you can cut and your barbers can cut and that's the the luck that I had is I can cut a little bit the barbers that I had could cut a little bit and it just worked out that way so that that was beneficial for us but my, my main resource was uh, the schools the the one thing that I will say and here's one of the mistakes that I made is I hired a barber showed up to work on time had clientele but none of the other barbers liked him and I didn't have a really good reason to fire him because like I said he showed up to work on time sometimes he showed up early and he stayed late later than any of the other barbers and he worked hard and I didn't have reason to fire him except for the fact that they didn't like him but we're adults we need to get along if I had to do it again I probably would have fired him and because when you're in a when you have your own shop you want continuity in the shop you want the environment to be right for your employees or the barbers and the customers I probably would have fired him knowing what I know now I would have just let him go right from the beginning and I had and he was with me for some years before I did eventually have to let him go because he became a, a problem um, established barbers are hard to get new barbers are easy to get um, I went the student barber route and I even had an unlicensed barber um, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do um, so I've experienced all of these I would say stay away from unlicensed barbers um, they have a tendency to bounce too uh, with no reason just one day you come in they're gone um, so I, I stay away from them um, student barbers I deal with um, new barbers I'll mess with um, depending on how much skill level they have student barbers I pretty much know I'm starting from scratch but sometimes new barbers when they think they can cut they can become a problem when you have to show them that what they're doing is not that great established barbers are hard to get but if you have friends or something like that in the industry you can probably get them building your clientele building clientele um, if you want to have repeat customers the easiest way to have repeat customers is to be consistent um, with uh, quality with your hours of operation give me one second 
Okay, I'm back. Um, building clientele. You'll need repeat customers. That's just the bottom line. The easiest way to have repeat customers is to be consistent with quality, with your hours of operation. I can't stress enough about consistency with your cuts and your quality and your hours. Uh, I know a barber um, who has his hours of operation and never abides by any of them. Any of them. And then he wonders why clients don't come back. The inconsistency. As men, we love consistency. We love to know what to expect and what we're in for. And that's what makes chains like McDonald's and Chick Fil A and you know and all these different chain food stores uh, so popular because they're consistent. You know what to expect. You're going to get the same thing every time. However you start a relationship is how you should finish a relationship. So my father is one who says, however you start is how you'll finish. So if you start bad, you're going to end bad. So you might as well not even stick around. The way you and your barbers dress will determine how comfortable your customers feel in paying you. That's true. If you look like a bum and you dress like a bum, they're going to want to pay you like a bum. But when you dress nice and you're presentable, they're going to want to pay you like you've dressed nice and you're presentable. So be consistent and look clean. Be consistent, look clean. Simple concepts. It's not rocket science because I'm sitting here and I'm like, yo, what else can I really say? But there's not much else to say. Be consistent. Look clean to build your clientele. When a client comes in the door, greet them. I can't tell you how ticked off it makes me when I watch barbers act like they don't see clients. You see the client, greet them. When they leave, tell them to have a great day. Tell them you'll see them next time. Tell them you'll see them in a week, two weeks, however off, however, uh, whatever their schedule is for their haircut. If it's every two weeks, I'll see you in two weeks. If it's every week, i see you in a week. Listen to your client. When they tell you what they want, listen to them. Don't just make it up. I know a barber who will just make it up. He's a great barber. People love him. He's a great storyteller, so people love to come in and hear his stories, but they will complain that he's not giving them what they want. Um... Ask questions to your client about exactly how they want their hair cut. This is how you get your clients. Tell your customer what products you're using. This is how you upsell your products. This is how you start to push your products so that you can make some additional money besides just getting that 20 bucks for cutting hair. Now you might be getting an extra three bucks or an extra 30 bucks depending on how much product they buy. They may come in and buy product on weeks that they're not that they're not getting a haircut and that's money in your pocket so you know let them know um, make sure your shop smells good I hate going into a shop that doesn't smell good I hate it I can't stand it I know if I can't stand it it's people out like me out there that can't stand it either I love when I come in and it smells like powder or it smells like you know the Jarris hair tonic uh, when it smells like a barber shop even if it just smells masculine I love it man like it just in my mind it just equates to being clean it could be dirty as I don't know what but when I look around it's clean to me so and and other people are the same way flyers are a great way to market your barbershop commercials are a killer but they can be expensive we talked about the commercial earlier that a friend of mine did if you're not careful it can be very expensive so be very careful and know what you're trying to do who you're trying to hit Growing your business, and we're, we're almost wrapping this thing up, guys. Growing your business. The basis of any barbershop or salon is simple. Cut hair. There's a lot more you can do to upsell your customers and expand your range. Specialty retail products might include fragrances, colognes. I sold colognes. I sold shaving products. I sold skincare products. I sold shampoo and conditioner. I sold, um, uh, what else did I sell? Uh, I sold anything that pertained to grooming, anything that pertained to grooming, and believe it or not, I started selling it because um, I went, uh, I, 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 let me back up, so there was a guy comes in, this millionaire guy, he's doing great in business, he comes in, he's looking around my shop, he sits in my chair, he says, you're breaking even, and I said, not quite, he said, you're a little over break even, I said, I'm making a profit, he said, not much, I said, no, but how would you know that? He said, because you don't have any products. I said, what does products have to do with anything? He said, when people come in a barbershop, your sole mission should be to take their paycheck. 
They want to spend it with you. They're going to spend it somewhere. They might as well spend it here. They're going to go get those products somewhere. They're going to go get those brushes and combs somewhere. They might as well get them from you. And I thought about it and I was like, dang, he poses a good point. So I started looking up shops that did it, that sold product. I went, I'm in Jersey. I went all the way to D.C. and Virginia to talk to shop owners. And their message was consistent. Products. 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 If you're going to run a barbershop, get some products. If you're going to if you're going to take the advice that I gave earlier and start your barbershop right in your chair where you are right now, you want to start selling products for yourself. There's no easier way to say it. It's so much money in products. It's unbelievable. It's a lot of money in products. Believe me when I tell you, sell them. There's money there. People want to give you their money. That's why they come to the barbershop. They want to give you their money. Take it. Um, I was trying to get into jewelry. I was trying to get into shoes. I was trying to get into ties. I was trying to get into cufflinks. I was trying to get into watches. I was trying to get into anything that I can get into. Caps, t-shirts, sweatshirts, whatever I could get into. Um, And I had a lot of things going on. I just never followed through with some of them. Others I did. And you'd be surprised at how many companies are willing to do business with you. Never be intimidated to contact a company. Understand that when you're contacting a company, you're contacting you're contacting an employee. Their job is to create accounts that will make the company money. So if they believe, if you're trying to sell men's watches, if they believe that your shop, especially if it has enough traffic coming through, it will be a good account for them and look good when the company looks at their accounts, they're going to give you that account. So never be intimidated on calling these big companies about doing business with them. Some of them will say no. Some of them will say you're just not a good fit. But a lot of them, what I found is a lot of them will say yes because my mindset is I'm just talking to an employee. I'm an owner of a company, but I'm not going to talk to the owner of that company. I'm going to talk to an employee who manages accounts. And he wants my account. He wants my money. And that's how I dealt with them. And that's how I got those accounts. And that's how you're going to get those accounts. Uh, The one reason why you should sell hair products such as shampoo, conditioner, and hair accessories, uh, of course, is to make a profit. Period. Position the products near the payment, the point of payment. Or, um, you know, when they come to the cash register or whatever, you want to have all your products facing them. It's the same thing they do in supermarkets when they have the gum and the candy and the chips and all that. And you find that you keep picking it up every time you get to the checkout. Because they know that those are impulse buys. Your, the products that they're going to buy will be impulse buys almost because you told them what you've used and they want to keep that style. They want it to look how it looks when they leave the barbershop. They want it to smell how it smells when they leave the barbershop. So the, your point of sale, um, you want to have it near your point of sale. So now when they look at it, they see the impulse buy. That's what he used on my head. That's what he used. That's the smell good he put in there. Let me get that. And now, listen, I, when I went, I bought $100 worth of product. I'm, well, I'm a product junkie, but, you know, that's not part of this tutorial. Um, you want to sell brushes, combs, shaving brushes. Travel kits work well, especially around Christmas time. Wives want to come in and get their husband something special, a gift card or whatever at your shop. Do gift cards because they work around the holidays. You may not sell them no time throughout the year, but on the holidays, I can't tell you how many wives I would have come say, my husband loves this barbershop. Do you sell gift cards? And I'd be like, no. I just missed out on some money. Um, I've had wives whose husbands have never been to the shop, but they've drove past and they just liked the way it looked and they came in and wanted gift cards and I didn't have any. Missed out on money. So that's another avenue, gift cards. And um, that's the end of this tutorial. Um, I tried to give you as much information as I could to get your barbershop up and running and to make it profitable. Uh, I've given you all the steps that you're, you're going to need to take to get your barbershop up and running and make it profitable. Um, but like I said, I, I did as much as I could remember. And as I remember more stuff, guys, I'll be, um, uh, what you call it, uh, redoing this or um, updating it um, so that when you guys look at it, you can get all of the information and get even more information. So... Just just keep an eye out if, if it updates um, and when it updates. 
uh, to come back and check out the new information. Um, but for right now, that's the end of this tutorial, guys. I've given you all the information that I could think of that I could remember. Um, and I'll try to write some blog posts on the information um, that may not be in here too so it can coincide with what is taught here. All right. So, guys, if you've watched any of my videos, you know the drill. Until we speak again, peace. Hey, um, before we, before, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have threw up the peace sign that fast. <laughs> um, I'm getting ready to end this video, but if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any, con any concerns, and I keep forgetting to say this in these videos, make sure that you contact me, that you hit me up in this members area. Make sure that you send me um, a message or hit me up on my wall. Anything to get my attention because I'm here to help you. I want to help you. I want to be involved um, if I can get involved. And the only way I can get involved is if you invite me. But I want to be able to be a resource for you and a help for you and a guide for you. That's the whole point of you being here. That's the whole point of me putting this together and setting it up the way that I did is to help you. So if you need help, please do not hesitate to contact me in, this, in the members area. I will get to it. And if I haven't gotten to you yet, it's probably because I have a lot of people that I'm trying to get to. But I will get to you. So if you need help, let me know. But we're back at the deuces. Peace.